Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for your listening pleasure, episode number 263. I am your host, Deron Land, aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Jack Brunner. Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> uh, Rick Alvarez was going to join us, but uh, Skype is being a little punk today and uh, uh, wouldn't let me on to begin with. Uh, I had to reboot uh, at least a couple times. Uh, and I think Jack has had some issues with it, and now yeah. Rick can't even get on. So it's it, it's it's being a, a hasslesome thing today. Uh, and as if you're watching the video, as you can see in the background, I am uh, in a new location. Uh, I'm in the middle of moving in with my girlfriend. Uh, my half of my collection is packed up behind me here in uh, a couple boxes. Um, and the rest of it is still in the glass cases at my old apartment. Um, but as such, I am recording this today uh, in the new place uh, where my computer is. And uh, uh, hopefully within the next couple, three weeks, everything will start to get back to normal. And, uh, you know, I have to the end of October to get out of my apartment. But I'd like to get all the stuff out first so I can clean it and do whatever I need to. Uh, but uh, the move is going well so far um uh, and I've, I've painted this room i painted uh another uh, bedroom in here and uh it's 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 very trying but at the same time very exciting uh and i'm, I'm really happy to do that i uh, hope everyone enjoyed the uh, interview with uh, benson yee uh last week uh had a really great time uh talking to benson uh and if you haven't checked it out uh, please go back and look at it uh, after this episode or um, uh, whenever is convenient to you. Um, the, uh, the subject of that uh, episode was uh, his experiences at HasCon 2017 uh, from the VIP attendee uh, perspective. And uh, some, really, some really great insight uh, from Mr. Benson Yee, and I'm, I'm really happy to, to have... Uh, got a chance to interview him here hold on let me fix them there we go um anyway uh tonight uh, today's episode is uh we're gonna be looking at some stuff from uh, that was revealed at tfcon usa in washington dc last weekend uh, a lot of uh cast members from tfyop was there i know headmaster don uh megamus uh daniel uh, a lot of great people from TFYLP was there, and hope everyone had a chance to stop by and check out uh, uh, Megamus's booth, as well as uh, our sponsor, Capture Prey. Uh, great toys, great prices, great service. CaptureProy.com. Uh, you save even more with uh, orders of $150 or more with free domestic shipping, and get discounted shipping for international orders of $150 or more. CaptureProy.com. Great po uh, great prices, great service. I, and I mess that up. Yeah. <laughs> my, my mouth is getting cottony. Hold on. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm really tired. Uh, also, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, Mega Toy Fan, maximize your collection while minimizing your cost with Mega, uh, Mega Toy Fan. Uh, you can find Mega Toy Fan at all the popular robot and toy conventions year-round, such as TFCon. Maximize your collection while minimizing your cost with Mega Toy Fan. You can also find him on Facebook. Just uh, do a... A little search for either Megamus or Mega Toy Fan, you'll find him. Um, and also, if you check out RippedApparel.com, you can save 10% on your order if you use the promo code TFYLPPOD at RippedApparel.com. Um, so, without further ado, we're going to uh, we, we're kind of pressed for time right now. Uh, you know, I have to go to work uh, uh, very shortly, and so does so Jack. Do so, uh, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna kind of blow through these pictures. But if you want uh, to uh, uh, go and check them out, uh, we're looking at the um, the uh, pictures from TFW 2005. Uh, they are a uh, uh, there's a gallery of the third party panel slides uh, that was revealed at TFCon uh, in DC. Uh, we're going to go through them really quickly. I'm going to screen share them here for uh, the viewers. And uh, we're going to talk about um, our thoughts on the, uh, on the, on the uh, reveals and, uh, and what we think uh, 
of, of them. Uh, also, I want to point out, uh, if you're not aware of it, BBTS just recently put up a pre-order for Godfire Convoy, the Encore reissue of Godfire Convoy. Now, it is at a godly price. It's like 280 bucks. Uh, and you got to understand, these are two older uh, leader class toys. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fantastic toy. Yep. But the, the thing is, is that uh, I was under the impression that the, the molds were uh, not viable anymore. I was actually speaking with Rick before we went on air about it, and he said that uh, as far as he knew, the, to- uh, the tools were uh, not usable anymore. They were not viable. So it's an entirely, it's most likely that this is a new tool. Uh, which would explain the ex- exceedingly high price. Hmm. Um, so, and it also begs the question: uh, Is it going to is it going to be worth it? You know, uh, not everybody's into the RID 1.0 aesthetic. Even though I'm a big fan of it, I, I don't. I'm assuming you are. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much one of the main seeds that got me into Transformers because that's when I came about and. I want to say it was one of the Autobot brothers, so I think it was like x Bron or Prowl that pretty much got me into R.I.D. while I was in like the last stretch of it, so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a great, great toy in my opinion. Um, you know, you combine the uh, Optimus Prime with the Ultra Magnus uh, and form uh, Omega Prime. Uh, I forget. Well, I guess in... in Japan, he was uh, he was called the uh, Super Godfire Convoy uh, mm-hmm. in that mode. Um, so I, I'm I'm really excited and really interested to see uh, this get released. It's hard. It makes me feel really old, uh, seeing as how it, that was 17 years ago that that toy was yeah. first out, uh, which you know would make it a classic reissue now, because. Uh, Back in that day, back in the days when that was out, was when we were starting to get the first Takara reissues of Generation 1 toys. And it was some 17, 18 years uh, after G1 was over. Uh, so it, it makes sense now. But it makes me feel really, really old again uh, that I've, uh, I've seen this day come now. Uh, but uh, uh, let's, let's get on to the, uh, uh, the third-party reveals. Uh, Jack, if you want to... Go ahead and pull up that link so you can follow along. Yep, um, I'm right on it. I'm screen sharing here. Uh, again, this is from uh, TFW 2005. Uh, I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, whoever uh, is providing these uh, pictures for TFW. It's uh, uh, some great stuff. These are from the uh, uh, the third party panel reveal. And the very first thing that we see here is. Uh, from our very own uh, Brycey, uh, a lot of his photography uh, is in these pictures um, of the Ocular uh, Echo, uh, unofficial photographic archive of Generation 1 toys, uh, Volume 1 and 2, which I got a notification uh, either last night or today that their Kickstarter is now 100% funded. Uh, I've I'm, I'm actually contributed to it, um, but... Um, it's really it's really awesome to see that it's uh, that is now 100 percent funded and these books will get made uh that's really exciting and i'm really happy for uh for brycey uh some uh, great stuff that's uh, that's in these um i think vo- yeah volume one is going to be the u.s collection uh 84 through 1990 uh every transformer including mailways decoys and many spies uh volume two will be the japanese and euro exclusives uh, that includes Headmasters, Victory, and Master Force. Um, so hold on a second. Just I got a message. I can't wait to get these. These are so amazing. Yeah. I uh, wanted to fund it, but unfortunately I couldn't due to my financial situation. But I hope to get these books. They are pretty flipping amazing. Well, I, you know, right now with me in the middle of a move, I couldn't do a whole lot, but uh, I, I at least did five bucks. So. Yeah, uh, I know a little bit of my money went to contributing to this, even though it, was, it wasn't much, but it was something. Uh, some great stuff uh, from Ocular Echo. Uh, it ended, uh, actually, the Kickstarter is not over until October 4th, or I'm sorry, October 14th. So it still has a week or two um, 
to go. And uh, now they're already 100% funded, so it's kind of, let's see where they can go from here. Uh, next up is uh, Moss Toys. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Moss Toys is a new third-party company. Uh, and uh, we've seen uh, Skiff from uh, uh, TFCon Canada, which is basically the Cybertronian Bumblebee. Uh, and they have the, the, uh, the Gold, which is basically Gold Bug in the Cybertronian mode. Volk and Rune. Uh, Rune is a, a glyph uh, homage, and Volk, I'm assuming, is like uh, Bug Bite. I think it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, next is uh, CTO004 uh, Strong, which is a Cybertronian Brawn. Uh, I'm not real crazy about the head sculpt on that. I don't think they nailed that too much. Yeah. Uh, Let's see here. Vehicle, vehicle mode is kind of weird. Okay, I mean, now I here's they've got an alternate head too. Uh, kind of give it the toy esque. Uh, oh head. yeah, there you go. Nice. Uh, the vehicle mode, I, I can understand if it's if it's a yeah. Cybertronian mode. Um, now that one, uh, that one's interesting. I guess it has like uh, some iron fists you can put on it. I guess I don't know. It looks like the way it is, it's like supposed to be like some sort of hologram or whatever. So yeah. kind of like the Green maybe, Lantern. Maybe the blue, uh, translucent blue plastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then this is interesting. Uh, the uh, Starscream, the Tetrajet Starscream. Um, I might might be interested in these. I might have to get the Thundercracker, obviously, because I'm a Thundercracker nut and... A Tetrajet would be really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. These yeah. look hopefully, good. hopefully, they're an improvement over the uh, uh, the Impossible Toys versions of these, which were kind of crappy. Um, the ba it's got a considerable amount of back kibble, it looks like. But yeah. where else are you going to put the parts? You know. Pretty and much. there's a teaser of uh, Starscream, Skywarp, and Thundercracker in those colors. Uh, so really, really excited about those. Uh, next up is uh, 03 Stack, um, which is looks like a pipes, I guess. These are, it uh, looks like drawings. Well, you got pipes. I don't know. Stack is, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, the, uh, they have like two different configurations for them, it looks like. Um, moving on, we got... Uh, uh oh there's uh, stack and bumblebee as again in their vehicle forms uh prototypes of uh stack the gray uh resin uh prototypes kind of interesting he has almost that uh the uh war for cybertron prime or fall of cybertron prime look to him i can kind of see that yeah I mean, it's not a straight-up copy, but I mean, he's, he's yeah. got got kind of that that motif to him. Uh, next is uh, G two T O O G E E T O O, <laughs> uh, and uh, don't say that too loud because Plasticon might uh, might might drop by. Uh, but Speed and ISO looks like uh, Rapido and Scram uh, are getting a third-party treatment. That's kind of neat. Uh, oh, and then big uh, BG National and Doug, which we got uh, Windbreaker and um, uh, Turbo Fire. I might have to get these because I'm a big fan of the uh, accelerators. Kind of nice. Okay, here's a, a singular shot of the uh, of the Rapido. Uh, looks like they got. Oh, and here's a gray uh, resin proto. Looks like they've got. Uh, some kibble, but, uh, and this looks like the, uh, I'm guessing the Scram. Maybe the Rapido. No, that's the Rapido. Uh, looks like they're roughly de deluxe size. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, next up, Mayhem Mechanics. Uh, our friend, uh, Sid Beckett, uh, he was on, uh, uh, the podcast, uh, several episodes ago. Uh, to talk about the Mayhem Mechanics, the Unrustable Bastards, uh, or now, uh, as they call them, the Unrustables, I guess, to uh, help uh, 
facilitate the sales of these. Uh, some places may not like the name Bastards. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm assuming that's why. Uh, yeah. Looks like we got some prototypes here, and they are pretty badass, I gotta say. Uh, scrolling on through here. Somebody did some uh, good Photoshop work. All right, really next good. up is uh, uh, Yamazuki. I guess. Oh, okay. This is the first of the unrustable bastards. Uh, the unrustables. It looks like he's got like a an oversuit, where he fits inside of the uh, the bike. Oh, that's interesting. That is really nice. Hmm. Uh, he's kind of like a got like a yellow mech suit that turns into the bike, and then the rider becomes like uh, uh, the person that goes on the inside of the mech suit. The way it kind of looks to me, it's like it's got the yellow suit, then it's got the black stripes going down, and it's got the sword. It kind of reminds me of Kill Bill. Yeah, from I think two thousand seven. Maybe that's uh, where they derive the name Yamazuki. Is it? Uh, doesn't that have a Kill, Kill Bill? I think it did. I didn't realize that until now. Yeah, that's kind of nice. And it looks like, of course, uh, they can ride each other. Kind of uh, of the uh, ilk of the uh, Junkions. Retgar and the Junkions. Uh, the fans will get the name this gang. That's, that's interesting. Hmm. Uh, Crimson Kings. Uh, more of the same. Uh, you got red, the uh, Scorpio Rifts uh, with a, a blue color to them. The Sewer Barons, uh, green color, green and yellow. Uh, and very turtle-esque, if you yeah, notice a chest was, design on that. Yeah. I was kind of thinking of that. Uh, Switchblade Jesters, uh, purple motif. Kind of looks like the Joker with the, mm -hmm. the way the face looks. And then you got the trash torquers. Uh, kind of looks like a, uh, a Boba Fett type uh, design on the face. Mm -hmm. The X Block Phantoms, um, kind of like a uh, uh, they're they're black. It's black and got uh, like a Punisher esque uh, skull on the face. Uh, next up is Mech Planet, and these are the. Uh, Hot G1 style soldiers, the small uh, legend size, uh, not world smallest, but they're they're pretty close to it. Uh, the, yeah. uh, I guess the legend size uh, pretty much uh, have to go with like uh, the Thrilling Thirty Legends, Optimus, Megatron, Starscream, yeah. pretty much, uh, and probably would look well with your uh, your city bots uh, like Trypticon, mm -hmm. Fort Max, and such. Uh, we're looking at the sound wave here. Uh, coming up, you got um, soundtrack, uh, which they call soundtrack. Then you got soundboard, which is sound blaster. Uh, it comes with a little mini rat bat. Uh, and then after that uh, is uh, iron tin, which is iron hide. Uh, an ambulance, which is uh, ratchet. Uh, neat little guys here. Uh, the packaging almost resembles the uh, Takara book style reissues. Yep. Uh, next up Here's is the uh, HS09 Bumblebee, which I actually think looks pretty good. Yes, his torso is a bit long, yeah, but he still looks pretty good considering his size. I think uh, he was only going for twenty bucks on BBTS, I believe. So that's yeah. pretty, pretty. Well, small. these these guys are pretty small too. Yeah. you got you got to got to keep that in mind. Uh, the Ooh. Ironhide and the Bumblebee together. Oh, and we got, they got an Optimus, uh, Optimus coming. Mm -hmm. Fall on trailer and how it opens up with all the cool little features that, like the G1 did. Uh -huh. Nice. Then comes my favorite part. Uh, Planet X. We're looking at some of the uh, offerings from Planet X. We got Sominus, uh, the translucent clear version, I guess the ghost Sominus, uh, which is the... Uh, Fall of Cybertron, uh, Starscream, and this these are the ghost colors. Uh, really, really awesome translucent. Got a uh, lot of pictures on them too. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't get enough Ooh, of the translucent. Then, 
And they got a sunstorm too. That looked kind of nice. Okay, let me get to it here. I'm still scrolling. <laughs> These look pretty cool though. Yeah, I just pretty much clicked a lot because there was a lot of pictures of Star Scream. Yeah, a lot of pictures of Star Scream. <laughs> okay, keep going here. Keep going. Ah, there we go. Uh, Synectus, uh, which is uh, Sunstorm. Uh, that does look pretty good. It's uh, it's the uh, Fall of Cybertron mold again, but in Sunstorm colors. I wouldn't uh, be surprised if they do uh, Acid Storm. And... Oh, I wouldn't doubt, doubt they do all of them, really. As soon as I call it, here it comes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yep, yeah, there you go. Uh, Asus uh, is the Acid Storm. Uh, it doesn't have any of the digital camo motif, but he's still got the, the green and black going on there. Yep. Uh, coming soon, uh, Phobidor, Fa uh, Fantasis, and Morpheus. I'm assuming the Coneheads, uh, I'm guessing. Oh, Actually, no. no. No, these are the Insecticons. Okay. Yeah, these are... Fall of Cybertron I, Insecticons. I don't think the Coneheads were in the games at all. I, they might have been just as DLC for, like, multiplayer, but I know the Insecticons, I think were coming pretty soon and luckily they are because I'd like to get a better version of Kickback than the official Hasbro yeah, these, this. these look pretty pretty awesome yeah. and next is the Megatron really really awesome uh, Fall of Cybertron Megatron I don't know what they're calling this because there's um, no name attached to it I think I read a name, but I forgot what it was. Um, actually, let me look it up quick. And next we look like a Ultra Magnus. Yeah, which is, I think it was pretty much just the Prime figure, but it comes with clippable armor, pretty much. To so what I'm kind of thinking, what they're gonna do with this, they're gonna have like another version of the Prime, pretty much a Prime repaint. Because they did, for the original Hasbro line, they did uh, Ultra Magnus. So I think they're going to do it in the Magnus colors, and they're going to add all the armor so you can yeah. choose whether you want just and the base spot. they do include a hammer. So the the uh, Forge of Solus there. Uh, There's some truck mode pictures of it. Next up is Zeta Toys, which I have quickly fallen in love with. Uh, Just a quick little uh, update for that Megatron. The name of Megatron was Pluto. Pluto, okay. Uh, now, Zeta Toys, I've actually gotten the uh, uh, their Whirlblade and uh, Blastoff. Uh, Whirlblade is actually uh, Vortex, uh, and Takeoff is their Blastoff, I'm sorry. Uh, the Combaticons. They are... I don't have them handy here, but they are enormous. Uh, they are, dare I say, leader class size. Each individual bot is leader class size. Um, they scale well uh, with, uh, say, Starscream and everything. Let me see if I can pull up a picture here uh, while we're talking. Uh, you can see Flyfire here, which is their uh, Fireflight. Uh, the detail on these is sick. Absolutely sick. Uh, and they are masterpiece scale. Uh, let me see if I can uh, pull this up here. Uh, here is the Whirlblade, the Vortex. Uh, these are my pictures here. Uh, got Whirlblade and Takeoff. Uh, they follow in the uh, Ocular, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, the Studio OX uh, motif. Uh, they got almost a Dreamwave design to them. Uh, now back to uh, Flyfy here, which is their uh, Firefly. As you can see, the close-up of the detail here, uh, all the panel lines, uh, the thrusters, the, uh, the, the missiles, um, and then the robot modes are very uh, true to the G1 character. And yes, they do combine. Next up is the Airstrike, which is the uh, uh, Air Raid. Uh, very nice looking Tomcat here. Uh, again, the detail is just mind blowing. They actually come back to robot mode beneath the jet really, really well. Yeah, uh, the the underside 
really does compact. I mean, you really can't uh, tell that it becomes a robot too much um, underneath. So it looks like you're able to uh, uh, fold the nose cone back. Um, of the uh, air raid. Uh, now here we have uh, the gray uh, CGI renders of uh, Skydive. Uh, their version of Skydive, rather. Uh, Slingshot. And Silverbolt. Not sure I'm keen about the, uh, the, the, the shield thing on the side. It looks like on the back of his arm. Maybe that's yeah. just, or maybe that just might be the no. That I think that's actually the the uh, jet wings. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Side, yeah. You can kind of tell the thrusters up top. Okay, yeah. At first, it kind of looked like a shield, but it probably just the angle that that image is. But it's still yeah. very, very silver bolt. Uh, and he does have the uh, the concord turns into a concord. Very nice. Uh, again, we got the Whirlblade uh, pictures of uh, robot and helicopter mode, and blast off. I'm sorry, takeoff, which is their blast off, and shuttle and robot mode. The sh I mean, I'm telling you, the uh, for uh, for size comparisons, the uh, the space shuttle for takeoff and space shuttle mode is taller than Masterpiece Starscream. If you stood the shuttle up next to Masterpiece Starscream, it is taller than Masterpiece Starscream in robot mode. That's going to be one big Bruticus. That is going to be a gigantic Bruticus. The Bruticus, uh, it, uh, I would, if I'm not mistaken from pictures I've seen, uh, it is supposed to be uh, a few inches taller than Titan Devastator in combined form. So, yeah, big. Damn. <laughs> And the best part about these guys are they're roughly 60 bucks for each of the limbs. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I remember you saying that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm i like, for the price, I'm not passing these up. I am not passing these up. Uh, next up is Swindle, which, you know, me personally, I didn't care for him from the gray protos. But now that they've got him colored up, I, I kind of dig great. him. I, he does look good. Uh, uh, so, uh, and he turns into a Humvee instead of a, mm -hmm. uh, a Jeep. Uh, which I guess would help in the combined form. Uh, next up is their brawl. Uh, looks really good. And uh, might I add that it will have working treads. Nice. Uh, looks like it has working treads. Uh, I know they're, uh, these come from the same people that designed uh, Toy World's Constructor. And I know Bone Crusher and Scavenger have working treads. Uh, so... Uh, Next up is, uh, I guess, D-I-X-Z Toys, Dixie Toys, I guess. Uh, looks like they're doing a Bruticus here. I'm assuming these are, like, super small. Yeah, the way it kind of looks, it looks like it would be a little deformed type of uh, Bruticus. Yeah. To where it'll actually maybe go with Legends. So I'm not going to knock these too much for looking kind of weird uh that, you know they're extremely small size uh they've got a uh masterpiece scaled uh, uh teletran one which looks pretty cool and then reserve show uh, soldiers uh which are roughly finger sized uh, a sky fire I think this I wrote an article on this one I think this was that headmaster they were doing okay okay yeah, I think it's to go with the uh, Titan's Return, I think. It looks like it, because he's got the little bot with him. And I think he was a headmaster. Mm -hmm. and then their Giga Raiden, which is uh, Optimus Prime. Not uh, Again, not entirely sure of the scale on these. I'm assuming they're like Legends class, maybe Deluxe. Saying uh, the Jetfire is 25 centimeters, so I'm... Thinking, let me see. Twenty-five centimeters. Once it loads, about nine inch, like just under ten inches. Oh, so, so the, for their Skyfire, that would be roughly Voyager, Voyager size. Yeah, eh, I don't know about that. So 
prime 14.6 is about f five and three quarter inches. So he's roughly deluxe size. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, one of my favorites, uh, Fans Hobby. Uh, they uh, burst onto the scene last year with their uh, phenomenal uh, G2 Prime and their Scourge. Uh, we're looking at their Scourge here. Uh, Megatooth, their uh, Monster Bots. Megatooth was the Repugnus. And uh, Phalong, which is their Double Cross. And uh, soon to be, well, I guess it's out now, is the uh, Fly Pro, which is Grotusk. Laser, uh, yeah, here we go. Fly Pro, MBO5. Uh, now, TFCon, they showed off uh, their Power Baser, which is MBO6, and it is Power Master Optimus Prime. Uh, and it does all the bells and whistles of Power, uh, Power Master Prime, has the Prime trailer, uh, the Power Master, uh, and the small Genrime uh, Prime, and the base, uh, and the Trailer does turn into a little base. Uh, that's really cool, and it does combine with the trailer. Um, another prototype image, and now we're looking at the uh, the uh, cool. Phalong special, uh, which is a Singapore uh, exclusive, uh, Singapore a Singapore convention exclusive, uh, and it is uh, basically. Uh, uh, Transmetal 2 Megatron uh, in design in in the uh, it's it's well it's Phalong which is their double cross uh, so it has uh, the two heads but it has significant remolding it's got like the double uh, um, sword thing that like RID Megatron had has a Megatron head totally remolded wings uh, so it's got a lot of a uh, lot of remolded parts and it looks really awesome uh, next up is MB08 Double Evil, their Overlord. This I can't wait for more pictures. I, this is amazing. Uh, this, I, I passed up on Carnifex because I had heard about this uh, some time ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I did. I, I'm really digging the looks of this guy. Uh, he is enormous. Looks like he's roughly uh, it says uh, four hundred sen four hundred millimeters high. So, uh, and they've got a picture of G one Overlord uh, standing next to him, and he towers over G one Overlord. G G one Overlord comes up to just under the Power Master ports on Double Evil. <laughs> so, uh, really, really excited about that guy. Uh, fans Hobby, if you haven't tried a Fans Hobby product, I highly recommend them. Uh, the quality is bar none. Um, I have not been disappointed with anything that they've put out so far. Um, great stuff. Looks like they got some add-on kits for their G2 Prime and their Scourge uh, coming out with trailers, uh, missiles, and guns for them. Uh and looks like, uh, let's see here, Jeff Sr. Looks like they're um, going to do one where uh, it actually has comic panels on the side of the truck, which is yeah. kind of cool. Okay, yeah. That is that is pretty neat. And they are also looking into different color variations of the uh, Scourge and G2 Prime, uh, Laser Prime mold. Uh, they are, uh, they've got some uh, BAPE. Uh, inspired images here. Looks uh, like a Magnus at the front. A Magnus at the front, yeah. Uh, and possibly a Toxitron, I guess, I'm guessing in there. Uh, That's so, what it looks like, yeah. yeah so uh, I'm, I'm hoping for a Toxitron. Uh, next up, we have DNA Designs. And I apologize if we're kind of blowing through these rather quickly, but uh, we're like I said, we're kind of pressed for time today. Uh, DNA, uh, the uh, Arashi, uh, looks like a Bonsitron. This was the Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon mold that they actually pretty much took and tweaked the living hell out of, and this thing looks uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah it looks They did the Bludgeon awesome. first, then obviously did the uh, Bonsai Tron. Mm -hmm. And next up, let's see here, continuing here. 
They got a lot of pictures of Arashi here. Just kind of going through. Okay, and now there's a bludgeon back there. Yep. I can kind of see him doing the G2 Megatron onto this. Mm -hmm. It's like they did with the uh, GDO. Yeah. Uh, next up is DX9. Uh, we got their uh, uh, Richthofen, or Richthofen, I guess. Uh, my, my German is not too great. Uh, but it's basically Power Glide, uh, Masterpiece Scaled uh, Power Glide. Uh, the looks of it is, uh, as you would expect, uh, very G1 cartoon inspired. Uh, even comes with the uh, uh, Make Tracks, or I'm sorry, uh, Hoist Goes to Hollywood uh, uh, alien mask for him. As well as the girl who loved Power Glide. Uh, comes with die cast parts. Uh, next is their Gabriel, DX9 Gabriel, which is their uh, version of Omega Supreme. Uh, but um, DX9 Gabriel, uh, it's it's roughly on par with uh, Fans Toys uh, uh, Terminus Giganticus, which is also uh, Fans Toys version of Omega. Uh, really enormous figures. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we have a uh, picture of the DX9 Gabriel next to op uh, MP10 uh, and uh, Masterpiece Inferno and Ironhide. MP10 comes to barely over uh, Gabriel's <laughs> knees. So if you have an MP10, look at your MP10 and imagine something almost two and a half times taller than that. I wonder how he scales next to uh, Star Saber. Um, be interesting. Uh, next is DX9 uh, D13 Montana. Uh, breakdown. Sunicon Breakdown. Uh, is a part of uh, their version of Minasaur, which they're calling Attila. Attila in combined form is uh, slated to be 50 centimeters tall, which I think we established 40 centimeters was what, about 9 inches? So uh, we're probably... Let me see. What's it loads? 50 centimeters is about 1.64 feet. So it's just over a foot and a half. half. foot and a half tall, okay. So that's, that is pretty big. Um... Some resume photos. Uh, next up is the DX9 uh, images of their legend scaled uh, uh, Dinobots, the Warren Pocket. Uh, I, I'd actually like to get a hold of these guys. They look pretty cool. Of course, I'm a Dinobot fan, so. Mm hmm. And very cartoon esque in their thing. Uh, next up is Giga Power. Uh, who are notorious for slowly releasing their products. Uh, you know, they've been around for, what, four or five years now, maybe? And we've gotten Grasser, which is their slag, and their Snarl uh, is getting ready to be released. And then Graviter, which is their sludge, uh, they're showing here. Uh so sludge is, uh, it seems like they're, they're picking up the pace a little bit. Um, me personally, I think they're a little bit too big. And they miss the mark on some uh, aesthetic design, in my opinion, as far as uh, face sculpt. Um, and this, this is strictly my opinion. Uh, they're sludge here. Uh, although, you know, they, they do a really good job of covering up uh, panels and stuff. And uh, in holes, hollow parts and stuff. I also am not a really keen on the dino head either. Yeah. The sludge. Uh, looks like he's got. Looks like he might have some die cast metal parts, I guess. Uh, G Creation is up next. Uh, here we see their uh, Optimus Prime. I, forget I what believe this was Ultra Maximus. Okay. Uh, really interesting designs here ba uh, based on the IDW version. Also, we're looking at their IDW, IDW version of Six Shot. 
Uh, of course, there's no names on here, so I can't refer to them properly. Um, and next to their Carnifex, which is, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's Carnifex, it looks like. Yep, that is. Uh, movie series stuff coming some from soon from G Creation Iron Factory, uh, famous for their uh, for their legend sized toys. Uh, here we see their uh, Seeker Squad, uh, Skywarp, Star Scream, and Thundercracker, uh, a Ghost Star Scream, as well as a Coronation Star Scream set. Uh, the Coneheads, Thrust, Dirge, and Ramjet. Uh, Combaticon Swindle. Which, you know, given these guys' size, they do, they they capture the look really, really well. In my opinion. Uh, their Brawl. What's your thoughts on the uh, G Creation Combaticons? It actually looks pretty well, I mean, you know, pretty nice. I mean, like I said, you know, you got to consider these are legends sized, so yeah, it's a little, you know, little yeah, little bitty guys. Brawl towers on this window, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bl other blast off. I like how they uh, looks like they have translucent windows on blast off too. That's pretty yeah, neat. You can kind of see a couple yeah. parts peek through. Vortex. Uh, which they call Spin Vulture. The way the helicopter looks kind of reminds me of uh, Armada Cyclonus. Cyclonus, yeah. It has a very Armada Cyclonus look to it. Especially the front of it and the uh, the way the tail looks. Yeah, well, even the color kind of looks at it. Yeah. Uh, Cannon Chariot, uh, their uh, onslaught. And next is the uh, the vehicle mode of it. And War Giant is a combined form. Uh, looks really good. Can hold. Oh, nice. I'm imagining he's probably Voyager sized in combined form. If they had a little size, I could look it up, but they don't. So I got a feeling he's going to be. I think it may be close to. Next is uh, Iron Factory Blaze Dash. Uh, looks like uh, their side swipe. And we got a Bolt Sprint, which is Sunstreaker. And they are not straight up redecos of one another. That's, that's yeah, a plus. Yeah. Uh, next is Spark Toys. If I'm not mistaken, these are a, uh, a Fall of Cybertron, uh, uh, War for Cybertron. Uh, they are not. Homages. These are the War Within. Or War Within, okay. That's yeah. right. They're pretty much updates to the Titanium Series figures. So, yeah, they're the War Within. Very nice looking, yeah. Got and, of course, you got the Megatron. Mm-hmm. These pictures are doing them justice because they, the detail looks insane on these. Yes. And the, uh, and the, the paint, paint looks the paint looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, just look at the face sculpts too. I mean, they uh, got like a snarling nose on the Megatron. Yep. And then the picture of Megatron standing on top of the Prime. Getting ready to thrust his sword in him. That, that's that's an epic, epic shot. Kudos to the photographer on that one. Uh, there are Spark Toys 03, uh, which is the uh, War Within Grimlock. Uh, we see here in gray proto form. Kind of interesting. Uh, I, I never did care for the, the pre Dinobot. Uh, version of the characters, but I understand why they exist. Uh, TFC Toys. Uh, here we see uh, the already released uh, uh, King Poseidon, the uh, or Poseidon, the uh, the Seacons, form Piranicon. Uh, 
I, I like I like this set, but in combined form, I think the head is a bit tiny. Yeah, I can kind of see that. The sword looks great, though. I mm -hmm. love the sword. <laughs> Uh, individual sea monsters is where these guys really excel, especially yep. uh, the thousand kills, the uh, the tentacle. That thing just looks so badass. I I'd like to have that just just as a standalone. But my thing is is I don't want to get one of a set and then then I'd be in, feel obliged to get the rest of the set. Yep. <laughs> uh, don't know what this. I guess this is a gun for him. Um, it's like different color variations you can assemble with it. Uh, next up is TFC's uh, Trinity Force uh, Raging Bull, which I actually own Raging Bull. Um, Trinity Force is their uh, their rendition of Road Caesar. Uh, I really like the looks of it, but it does have a few quality issues. Uh, and I, I am t I'm telling you the it does what it come with the it does come with the brain master gimmick it does have the brain master uh, but you can actually forego that and just give it a, re a regular uh, head uh, and completely ignore the brain master gimmick but the brain master is literally like not even an inch tall the brain master <laughs> itself it's like half an inch. I'm talking like world's smallest ravage, tiny. Uh, and it's it's getting it's 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 down there. Um, my raging bull had some uh, uh, tabbing issues. Uh, some of the tabs didn't don't, don't don't quite tab in just right. But I will have to say it really hits the mark on uh, a lot of the uh, the looks of Laster. Raging bull is Laster. Uh, out of the Road Caesar combiner set. Next up is Red Knight, which is their Braver. Uh, have not got this one yet, but I will eventually. And of course, next is if I can get to it. Uh, their Blacker, which there's not a name on here. I don't know what it's called yet. Uh, Wild Hunter, I think it's saying, because there's okay. the first photo that shows them. There's a name. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he turns into the Dune buggy, and he's a little bit bigger <laughs> than the other two. Yeah. But I think that's just to help make uh, make up for. I mean, you're making a combiner out of three figures, so mm -hmm. uh, you know there has to be a size this differential there. And there's the combine, combine four. Mm. Really, really awesome. I can't wait to have that. Road Caesar is one of my favorites. Next up is uh, TFC's Satan, uh, their version of the Terror Cons, uh, the G1 Terror Cons. It says now printing over each one of them. Uh, hmm. I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic these guys are showing, uh, from what we can tell. Of course, there's a lot blurred out here. Yeah. Um, Want to wait and see the final version of these guys. But I think the Unique Toys uh, Ordin uh, probably hit the mark on the uh, G1 look a little bit better for those guys. Uh, next up is Thunder Commander, uh, the G.I. Joe Rolling Thunder. That turns into an Optimus Prime. Uh, seems like there was a third party that actually had this. Uh, um, some time ago that didn't really do too well with it, if I'm not mistaken. I remember that. I'm trying to remember the name. I can't think of it. Uh, next up is Bad Cube. Uh, they're Engineer Huff and Warrior Piper. Uh, they re basically went back and revisited uh, uh, Cubex Huff and redid him, uh, basically re-engineered it into the uh, the Bad Cube uh, aesthetic. Uh, the robot modes look great, but I'm not I'm not really keen on the on the truck modes. Truck modes are a little bit lacking in my opinion. 
Uh, next is Rising Force. Uh, we're seeing their Motormaster here, which I have to say that out of all the third-party Motormasters so far, in the truck mode, or I'm sorry, the robot mode, that Motormaster actually hits the uh, aesthetic mark. It's got the truck uh, truck cab for feet and the robot head. Now the truck mode. <laughs> uh, well, what's your thoughts? Uh, I just hope the only thing they really do to it is they have a sliding mechanism where you can pull them out a little farther. Yeah, the, the, I, the, I really don't like that. It's, yeah, the cab is literally up against the tr uh, the front of the trailer. Yeah, um, which I'm not kinda sure. Kind of have like what uh, the Power Master Prime for Titan's Return did, or you know the Combiner Wars Magnus, to where you mm -hmm. pull it in to transform it, but you bring it back out to uh, pose them and whatnot. So I hope they do that with them. Yeah, if they did, if they do, then this might be a consideration. Uh, Generation Toy is next. Uh, we see their uh, GT1 Gravity Builder and then the GT1 GS Green Shadow. It's basically Gravity Builder, which is their constru uh, their uh, their Constructicon set, the Devastators. Uh, Green Shadow is a fully translucent Devastator. Uh, get out of here with that stuff, cause you're making me sick here. I got I gotta have to. Have. I, I, you know, it looks it looks awesome, and and I'm I'm a really big fan of translucent stuff. Oh. Uh, next is a GT2 uh, uh, RE Tyrant Re Tyrant, uh, basically the the Stealth Bomber Megatron. Uh, Generation Toy Op X, which is uh, the IDW Optimus Prime, and huh, I kind of like <laughs> this one. Gee, uh, I wonder why. You know, the GT6 Duron Drill. <laughs> I have to get this just because it's got my name in it. But yeah, it's basically a, I guess, a homage to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, I guess, uh, the knockoff sets or something other. It's, it's orange, so it's G2-ish in color. Yeah. So I don't know. And from what I understand, the drills are motorized and the spin independently. Hmm. Uh, Guardian GT8, which is basically their uh, defensor. There's a shot at their blades. Uh, Streetwise. And next is Generation Toys Optimus Primal. Wow. Uh, GT10. I don't know what this one's called either. Uh, it's got a very Cybertron Primal esque, uh, -esque look to it. Um, very. It's not. It's 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 got the Beast Wars Optimus Primal look, but in a very robotic form. It doesn't have yeah. a. It doesn't have a. Uh, uh, a uh, organic look to it at all. Yep. Kind of reminds me of that little Cybertron Deluxe uh, Optimus Primal. Yeah. Uh, but it says the new series, a new start, GT11. Uh, looks like a, uh, a Tantrum, maybe. And GT12 looks like some sort of cat. I'm not sure. But uh, the GT11 kind of has a, uh, a bull look to it. Yeah. Thinking maybe they're starting to dip their toes into Predator King. Mm hmm. Uh, next up is uh, my favorite and a lot of people's favorites, mm -hmm. Fans Toys. Uh, FT-19 uh, Apache, which is their Springer. Should be out very soon, I would imagine. Probably probably by the end of the year, I'm guessing. Uh, Fans mm -hmm. Toys FT-22 Coot, which is their uh, Cup, Target Master Cup. I have that on pre-order. Give me now. And, of course, as we mentioned earlier when we were talking about Gabriel... Uh, from DX9, we have uh, FT20 Terminus Giganticus, uh, which is shipping now. And I can't wait to have mine. Absolutely phenomenal looking toy. Uh, next up, we have Perfect Fusion, 
which is uh, uh, I guess they are it's fans toys, but it's uh, they're releasing it under the fans uh, Perfect Fusion uh, uh, banner, and they basically went back to Scoria and redid him in a slightly different scale with some uh, uh, some changes. They tweaked the mold quite a bit. Uh, I don't think he looks quite as much like a potato in dino mode now. <laughs> uh, but he still looks good. Uh, Perfect Fusion PFO2 Quietus, which is an amazing, an amazing looking Cyclonus. Um, then he comes with the optional IDW head where he has one of his horns. The broken, bro- broken horn, yeah. Uh, which I will not use. But then yeah. I think he also come with uh, a couple hip skirts mm-hmm. for that look too. Then he also comes with the head that doesn't have the broken off horns. Mm-hmm. And look at that jet mode. <sighs> Would you just look at that? All you can do is yeah. just look at it. And there you see it next to the fans toys lupus, which is their weird wolf. Uh, and he's. Uh, quite large in size, actually. And next to uh, Fans Toys uh, Sovereign, which is their Galvatron. Lupus is not small either. He's. Not. And of course, he comes with not only the alternate heads, uh, but also the Target Master as well. That's PF, uh, Perfect Fusion PFO2 Quietus. Uh, Make Toys, or Maki Toy, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I absolutely crapped a brick whenever <laughs> they showed uh, uh, MTRM09ST Bounce Back, which is the long-awaited stepper, uh, or ricochet. Uh, next up is uh, uh, Fans Toys showed at TFCon their highbrow and the line drawings for a, bra- a brainstorm. So they are That's... finishing off the G1 Autobot Headmaster, uh, large Headmasters. And I sold my cupola, and I gave up on Iron Wheel because I didn't think they was going to finish this set. And now here they are. <laughs> but they do look amazing. Uh, Grand Mine, uh, which is their uh, highbrow, uh, absolutely awesome. And the Wise Blast, which is Brainstorm, is in the planning stages. Ooh. Uh, and now they're showing uh, Silverback, which is uh, Make Toys version of Ape Face. Uh, they've got some competition because I have to say the KFC uh, uh, version of Ape Face, I have it, and it's pretty, pretty awesome. And I'm assuming that they're going to do the Snapdragon, but they haven't showed it here. Uh, the Galaxy Meteor, uh, which is the uh, Cybertron Starscream. They are doing Galaxy Lightning and Galaxy Sh- uh, Skycrow. Uh, Thundercracker. The whole. Mm-hmm. Thundercracker uh, and Skywarp. They, uh, they put them up for pre orders, and I think they said they didn't have enough, so they canceled them for a little bit to pretty much see what would happen. And I think now that they're getting more pre orders in, they're finally going to bring them back, and now they're going to do these. Mm-hmm. I'd, re- I'd kill to have that Thundercracker. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of wonder how much of that was actually a marketing ploy. I kind of yeah. wonder. Uh, next is uh, Galaxy Manus, some line art. Uh, I'm assuming a uh, looks like a Prime of yep, sorts. Yep, that's Cybertron Optimus Prime. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've been waiting for mm-hmm. an empty scaled And Lord Cybertron. Despotron, a Cybertron, uh, Cybertron Megatron. Thunder Manus uh, Divine uh, Suit box set basically uh, uh, turns Thunder Manus into a uh, <laughs> Power Master Optimus Prime or God Jin Rai. Uh, Buster Skywing, which looks like uh, Cybertron uh, Jetfire, maybe? And Cybertron, yeah. And uh, a ne- as yet unnamed uh, Galvatron looking toy from Make Toys. Uh, next okay. is Mastermind Creations. Uh, not sure who that is. 
Uh, I think that's Drift. Okay, okay. Looks like a Cybertronian form of Drift. Cybertronian ver uh, form of Drift, yeah. A bonus red, ch uh, red crest head and first drop. Hmm. Uh, Alter this... beta reformatted. I believe this black one was... Funny, it was a Decepticon, but... but... Because before Drift joined the Autobots, obviously it was a Decepticon, and I believe he had a black color scheme. Mm-hmm. I thought it was purple. Yeah, I, uh, uh, the uh, Coulter Asterisk Mode. Uh, I obtained one of these. Uh, I, I contacted Orson uh, at Capture Prey, and he picked one of these for me, uh, up for me at TFCon USA. Uh, basically, Coulter Asterisk Mode. Um, Coulter, if you uh, are familiar with the IDW comics, uh, is the toy version of Tarn. Uh, well, the Asterisk Mode is Tarn in a red and uh, uh, dark red color scheme with an Autobot face mask. Uh, I saw this, and I see the last Autobot from the original Marvel yeah. comics to me. Uh, yeah. And that's why I had to have this. Uh, and it looks amazing. I remember reading somewhere, I forgot where it was, but I think somebody said it was Glitch. Because before uh, G Glitch became Tarn, I think Glitch was an Autobot, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, trucks, uh, basically a... Uh, T-Rex, a uh, Grimlock. And Hardball, a, uh, looks like a Generation style Warpath. Kind of has the uh, video game style to it too. Yeah. A little bit. And then uh, Transform Dreamwave. Uh, basically add-on kits for... Uh, 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 like uh, Computron is shown here. Looks like uh, hands and feet, much no, like the like perfect flies. effect. Yeah, much like the perfect effect uh, add-on kits. Uh, and we got an add-on kit for their Overlord Titan Returns Overlord, which pretty Gift. much the only thing they really keep is the uh, jet. Everything else they pretty much get rid of. Yeah, and I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you got six shot add ons. Which makes sense because I honestly kind of don't like the headmaster in uh, six shot. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks weird. Next is the uh, Ocular Max. Uh, we're seeing the TFCon USA exclusive uh, uh, off road to Regus. Uh, which it looks nice, but from what I understand, it didn't sell too well at the convention. Oh. Um, basically, it's a white uh, trail breaker uh, with uh, muddied up uh, deco, and it looks really, really good. But I think I'll pass on it. Uh, Omni uh, Ocular Max Omni, which is a uh, Cosmos, a masterpiece style Cosmos. And if you look closely inside the window, you have a little tiny bumblebee and a little tiny blaster. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And he looks <laughs> really good, too. Uh, next is Saltus, their version of Springer. Ocular Max Springer. Looks like a very early form of him, though. Um, uh, yeah. Some unpainted areas on it. So I'm thinking more than that. So that's got to be die cast. Yeah. yeah I think it's material, the material, not final. Yeah. And then uh, prototype of their uh, cliff jumper. Uh, called Hellion. And even comes with little skids that goes on the uh, feet. Or I'm, I'm sorry, on the wheels of the car. Oh, did I see that correctly? Yeah, uh, it looks like the uh, uh, the little figures that come with the masterpiece, like, uh, like Spike, will sit yep. inside of Hellion. Hmm. So nice. And uh, guess what? Another Bruticus. Yay. Yeah. Uh, Impetus, uh, which is their Vortex. Incursus, which is their Onslaught. Uh, Frodo, which is Swindle. Probus, which is Brawl. And Volatus, which is uh, Blastoff. 
uh, co uh, combines into the Assaultus Militia, uh, which is their Bruticus. And is, from what I understand, these are Masterpiece scale. And next and last but not least is the Ocular Max Remix. Uh, these are the one-to-one -one scale cassettes. Got their Buzzard and Vulture. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Buzzsaw and Laserbeak. Uh, they are full-size cassette tapes. Uh, not many cassettes. Uh, Tremor, which is uh, Rumble. And from I what believe... I, the the uh, pile drivers are motorized. Yep. On this, yeah. And Frenzy. Of course, Digibash. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we had KFC last. Um, we got uh, Strato Tanker, which is their Octane. Looks very nice. Uh, the truck mode's a little bit lacking, but yeah, at least it's articulated. And it looks like like we have a Darkwing and Dreadwind. Uh, it's also also a Buster and Hydra. Oh. Coming from KFC. Also got X Trans following. Yeah. Damn it! I'm gonna to have to get those two, uh, those guys too. X Trans bots. Uh, we got their uh, Stoticons, Crack Up, uh, Flip Out, which is Wild Rider, Death Wish, which is which is Dead End, Overheat, which is Drag Strip, and Gravestone, which is Motormaster. He actually looks pretty good, too. Yeah, he does. And they combine into Monolith. 49 centimeters, so I think that was like... About a foot and a half. Yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> and that will be it. Uh, that is a, uh, a, a scroll through of all the reveals from TFCon USA. Um, 434. Yeah. I know, I know. It's been kind of. It's probably a boring listen for uh, for listeners, um, but and I apologize for that. But you know, we kind of wanted to uh, go through and show uh, our viewers uh, who might not have been able to see the uh, toys from uh, TFCon, uh, what they look like, and and kind of briefly go over each one and uh, and some of our thoughts on them. Uh, do you have any thoughts uh, coming out of TFCon? Anything that you're really excited over? Um, well, I didn't really see the photos of the the uh, Make Toys Cybertron figures. The only mm -hmm. ones I really know about were the Starscream repaints. But after seeing the photos of the Optimus and Megatron, I'm really excited for those because Cybertron is pretty much where I got my start. Well pretty much the Unicron trilogy and after seeing those I am so excited for those now yeah that, that is really exciting uh, there's there's a lot of stuff there that I'm excited about um, you know I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised by the like I said there at the end the uh, X Transbots version of uh, Buster and Hydra and uh, Darkwing and Dreadwind uh, look really really good all right we're here with headmaster don a little add-on to the podcast here uh wanted to ask don uh some things about uh tf con uh usa in uh, reston uh, virginia uh here in 2017 uh, basically get his thoughts on the uh on the con uh, convention and and some highlights for uh, of the show for him uh, Don, uh, uh, how how did you like the show? I had fun. Uh, I, I'm not sounding super excited. I, I had I had a lot of fun seeing everybody, hanging out with everybody. Uh, but something was missing from the show, and this is this is purely an intrinsic kind of thing. I can't tell you what it was. I have no idea. It's just I had fun. But I felt like I could have had more fun if this missing thing had been there. If that makes any sense at all, it's just the dealer's room was crowded, but it was it was it was a lot of stuff in there. Um, yeah. you know from from pictures and video that I saw. I know Antoine Lewis uh, shared uh, a video of the dealer room. It looked like a really cramped dealer room. Was it actually that way in person? Yeah, it felt that way. It was especially especially with me being a bigger guy. Um, it 
it felt like I was back at TFCon Chicago in the basement. Mm. Now, some, some people I've talked to said it wasn't that bad. Some people have said it was just as bad, if not worse. Um, uh, but again, when you've got that mad rush when the door opens for the first time on Saturday, it's that's kind of an artificially inflated moment in time because everybody is trying to get to the same couple of dealers. It's like Bot, when BotCon opened up, everybody went to the Japanese dealers first, mm. or the Big Bad, or whatever. You know, there, there's certain people that always get hit first when the doors open. Yeah. Once the once the rush died down, it was a lot easier to navigate, but it was very cramped there for a while. Um, but again, you know, it's nothing against nothing against Daniel, nothing against anybody who put this on. It's just there's something intrinsic missing from the show that I cannot put my finger on that can't be from having as much fun as I've had in the past, and I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe it's because I wasn't there or something other, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was, yeah, that was it, I'm sure. No, I mean, I, you know, I, I've told many people that I, I really wish I could have been there. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it's just the fact that it's the best replacement you, we have for BotCon, and it's still not BotCon, I guess. It's, I mean, it doesn't have that official capacity or anything well, in well, you you really didn't get in on the early bot cons, 94, 95, 96. Mm-hmm. And it felt more like that to me. It, it felt it felt fine up uh, other than that un the thing I can't point out, the thing that I feel was missing, but it felt like an early bot con. We had guests, we had exclusives, we had uh, panels and such. Uh, it didn't feel quite as stru- it felt like it was structured, but not like down to like the very minute when everything had to be planned out precisely to keep it from imploding. Mm-hmm. Some shows having too much stuff going on. Um, so yeah, it felt it felt like early botcon, and I mean that as a compliment because I kind of missed that feeling with later botcons and it had that the- corporate feel to it. Yeah, again, it's. It's a feeling that, but yeah, it, it didn't, it felt like an early bot con, like I said, 94, 95, 96, uh, but it didn't, again, it, it sounds like I can't make up my mind, but it's just an intrinsic thing that I feel more than I can explain. So what were your highlights for the show? Uh, well, get, getting to see everybody, I, I get to see everybody from uh, TFYLP and RFC, uh, seeing some friends. Uh, that I know otherwise, like, got, got to talk to Evangelist for a few minutes, and it's always nice talking to him because uh, he's got some really great insights. Uh, met P.L. in person for the first time. Met Bolt Matrix for the fir- in person for the first time. Um, got some exclusives. Um, missed out on a couple of things just because the dealer the dealer, the dealer's room was so crowded. They all, like, all the all the twin twists and misfires pretty much got on first. And by the time I got out of the line for the exclusives, they were all mostly gone, except for the ones that were really expensive. Even they were gone after a while. Um, I went to the uh, podcast panel. That was, of course, highlight seeing all the guys from the different shows there. Uh, went to their an Archer panel. There was a podcaster panel? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, it was a pre-show podcaster panel. And a post show podcasters panel on what we wanted to see, and then the wrap up. I wasn't on the I wasn't on the latter, but I was on the first one. Uh, so there was that. Uh, went to the Aaron Archer panel. Uh, one of the highlights was me wasn't even wasn't even a, a, a panel or anything. Aaron Archer actually was walking by with Daniel, and he recognized me. He said it was good to see me again. He shook my hand. I said I got my RC, and he sort of smiled and walked off. So it was nice to be <laughs> You know, it's like, well, it could have been like, thank God he got his toy. Maybe now he'll shut up. <laughs> no, Aaron's like, a great guy. He's, he, he really he, is. He really uh, is. Um, and uh, I mean, it, it, that, that, was, that was a highlight. Again, going to a lot of places to eat that I've never been to before. I probably never will again. Uh, just, it was fun. It, I, it was enjoyable. Um. So, so uh, do you, what? What? What is your toy haul that you picked up 
at the show? Uh, let's see. Um, I picked up the um, Shattered Glass Rodimus. And in a surprising move, I picked up the Tarn, which I have no real connection to since I'm not reading IDW and I don't have any connection with the DJD. But I like the looks of the figure, and having a Fire Guts version of it is something that is interesting. Well, you know, I, I mentioned this whenever I was talking to Jack uh, uh, earlier in the recording. Uh, I, uh, I had Orson pick me up one of those too because whenever I saw that, I'm like, my first, uh, my very, very first uh, impression of it, the last Autobot. Yeah, that's when I saw. That's the why I had that. That's, that's. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was some inspiration drawn from that with with the Autobot faceplate and everything. There's that. Um, I picked up the uh, clear Star Scream. That was an impulse buy that I'm kind of regretting. It's just. You know, clear plastics are my weakness. That's, you know, you know how people will now look which, like. Which clear star screen are you, are you talking about? It's the uh, uh, War Within. It's the Sominous. Oh, okay. Uh, same thing as the, you know, it's the longer version. I've got the clear star screen from DX9, hmm. the G1 version. This was the the War Within, War for Cybertron version. Um, again, I was kind of like, it's so beautiful, and uh, with the light hitting it and the crystal plastics. Now I'm like. But I don't have any connection to the design because I really don't care about the. <laughs> so I kind of regret getting it, but I kind of don't. So it's that's there and there. there. Uh, my friend JT Hogg, uh, over from RFC, a friend mm -hmm. of the podcast. Uh, my friend, I was rooming with him and my friend uh, Blade Raider, uh, and they both found Overlord, but they each got the only Overlord the table had. And I was like, I can't believe both of them found Overlords and there was none of them left. For them to say, hey, we, there's extra overlords here. But uh, my friend JT found one from Toy Dojo. It's a slight misassembly in which it has two of the same fins on the arms. Oh. But, but I got it for 35 bucks. I'm really not going to complain getting an overlord mm -hmm. for less than retail with something that minor. No. Uh, picked up a, a bone white Bandai Spacey because mine is aged yellow. So I picked that up for $2. Picked up a knockoff of Mock Baron from Thunder Baron, the the, the indie race car, mm -hmm. in purple. And I've never seen a purple mo uh, KO of that. And I think it will actually combine with Thunder Baron's other components. Ooh. I mean, to try it out, yes, yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, picked up Machine Robo Blockhead and Leader One. So there's that. And uh, picked up from the Room Parties a uh, title, a Armada title wave for 15 one, uh, I want the Energon version more, but not spending sixty dollars. I thought you already had those. I saw, I saw, uh, the, I saw the Armada title wave years ago when I was trying to get rid of some Armada stuff. Mm -hmm. I've kind of, I've kind of regretted him selling him ever since. Um, picked up an Impossible Toys Wasp for two dollars. Just to have a wasp, <laughs> and it's worth two dollars. That's about it. Um, <laughs> two bucks. It, it's about worth two bucks, um, and uh, I, I, I mentioned this a few weeks ago that I was able to get Pial's Devil Stinger from him. Mm -hmm. uh, the hand had a slight had some damage from the factory, and Pial was able to work with uh, TF Source and get me a new head uh, for the figure. So my my, my Devil Stinger is now complete. So I appreciate that from him and get me get me a new head for the figure. Um, that's pretty much that's everything I picked up. Um, I did find on the way up a scorn on on the way up, which is something I had not seen loose in the loose in the store in the wild yet. I got mine from Walmart.com, even though it was saying uh, the listing said TBA or TBD. Uh, you know, I, I ordered it. I had the uh, the actual order number for uh, for it, and whenever I got it, I picked it up at the site to store. The lady at the site to the store, she, uh, she sat there and she scans uh, or she she pulls up the order. And she's like, well, that's that's odd. I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, it's coming up um, to be determined. Like that. And she goes, it's not telling me wh what it is. And, and I said, well, it's a transformer. And she's like, well, how do you know that? And I said, well, I 
I have my sources, you know. <laughs> and uh, and she's like, so you ordered something that you didn't know what it was. I'm like, pretty much. <laughs> so we, we, she cuts open the thing to make sure it's the right right item. And I can't, I'm like, yep, that's it. <laughs> she's like, well, I can't believe you bought something and you didn't know what it was. <laughs> Well, uh, a good friend of mine tried three times on Kmart.com to get Human Alliance Jazz. Hmm. He got barricaded all three times. So you had better luck than he did. Um, the, only other, the one thing that surprised me, though, is I did not see any Walgreens clone sets, which I was expecting to at least see a couple of. There may have been some there, and, and in the initial rush, I missed them. Hmm. But I don't. I have not heard of anybody actually picking one up at the show. So there's that. I've got the Takara ones ordered. I can't. I can't wait till they come out. I'm. I'm hoping because my Walgreens is recently uh, one of the two has expanded their toy section. So I'm hoping that there's that. And on the way up, I saw them the uh, Cyber Battalion. I saw all four: Bone Bee, Optimus, Prowl, and Jetfire. The Prowl is actually kind of tempting, but for sixteen bucks, I'm going to hold off. Oh wow! That. Are they? They're deluxe priced, and and they're that simple. Yeah, they're sixteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Optimus is basically almost is almost basically your Legends class Optimus upscale. The Jetfire we've we've seen before is is your basic nose tilt up. You know, as far as I can tell, the feet don't even move. The feet are the same in both modes. You know, nothing even moves on. Wow. Them. The Prowl is kind of interesting with the way it's because see the the transformation gives them elbows, mm-hmm. which is which is interesting, but that's really about it. Um, the Bumblebee is just another Bumblebee. Nothing really special there. Um, third party wise, a lot of it. Uh, Slightly, like, you know, the main thing about the third party panel was that they ran through it really, really fast. Which I know they have to when they have that many supplies. <laughs> well, it's, uh, this this episode here. Uh, whenever Jack and I uh, we did it, I mean. Uh, and I apologize to the uh, to the listeners if you're listening to uh, to the audio version because it was probably a very boring listen uh, because uh, because basically we're just going through the slides and commenting on them uh, and there was like 400 slides <laughs> so trust me it was very boring sitting in the room uh, watching those slides because and, and again I again I'm not trying to blame anyone at TFCon because there's a ton of stuff to go through. The only thing I'm gonna take 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 a problem with is that once they finally got to the new stuff at the very end that we had not seen before from the past TFCon or at TF Nation, and I believe this stuff was brand new that was just now being shown for the first time. I believe it was. If I'm wrong, you know, mm-hmm. someone please correct me. But they ran through that as well. And I was sitting relatively up close and as fast as they moved through some of the slides. I couldn't tell what these figures were, who they were supposed to be. There's a War Within Ultra Magnus, but as fast as the slide went by, I didn't know that was Ultra Magnus. It looked like it looked like it could be a road buster. It could be anybody with a truck mode. Hmm. I had no idea. And if they had just s- slowed down just a hair and say, this is X, it's Ultra Magnus from Y series being done by X Party, just so that way everyone, because if I'm that sitting that close and I'm seeing the screen, and I can't tell who it's supposed to be, I'm sure the people in the back couldn't tell either. Well, quite honestly, there's uh, scrolling through uh, some of them, some uh, especially whenever you get to like the uh, the the really out there designs, like the Fall of Cybertron and everything. Uh, it's really hard to recognize characters sometimes because they're so stylized. Right. And, um, and, and- I've not played the games. I didn't really hear anything about the the whole War Within universe kind of thing. It didn't really make it. It just wasn't something I really dealt with outside getting the few deluxes that we got. Um, you know, there was a lot of great stuff. There was, there was, I had to go to the dealer's case and see some of the stuff in person and ask the people at TFCon that was watching all the deal, watching all the glass cases, who is that supposed to be? Because I couldn't tell in the, in the slideshow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but uh, Again, that's that, again. That's just me. That's the one thing I would have taken away. It's like when you get to the brand new stuff at the end, you could have slowed down just a hair to give us a little more detail on who's who. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I want to thank you, Don, for uh, for dropping by real quick and uh, give us, uh, giving us your thoughts on the show. Um, again, uh, tune in next time on TFYLP and. Uh, 
Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit more about TFCon um, with Daniel and, and some other people as, as uh, the weeks go on. Um, uh, again, uh, Don, thanks for, uh, for joining us today and I uh, uh, hope you had a good time and enjoy the rest of your vacation. I'm well, thank you. Sleep. 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 <laughs> um, well, I think that'll do it for this episode of TFYLP. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, again, we're going to try to return to a normal live schedule within the next uh, month to two months. Uh, hopefully within the next month. Uh, like I said, I've got to get fi- fully moved into this uh, uh, place here. And uh, the internet needs to be seriously upgraded uh, because it's much lower than what I had at my apartment. Um, so... Um, in order to be able to do live video, I've got to, I've got to get it brought up. Uh, but uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening on TFYLP. I'm Deron Land along with Jack Bruner. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Nice.